We have another huge update on DLSS 3. This is thanks to the fact that the guys over at Digital Foundry were granted exclusive access by NVIDIA to some early builds of this. So keep in mind, this is not the final released product, although we are very close to the, being at the final released product. So I would imagine this is at least fairly representative of what we will see. Uh, the first thing I wanna mention is that uh, we're, we're actually seeing it like in Spider-Man, how it will interact with the UI because you won't actually see DLSS 3 as an option in the, uh, in the UI. What is it's instead doing is a set of features that can be toggled individually. So under upscaling method, you will still see DLSS super resolution as an upscaling option. And that's still going to be available on your older graphics cards like your RTX 3000 and RTX 2000 series graphics cards. And that will, as far as I can tell, still operate normally um, and be a, an equivalent, uh, equivalent, you know, upscale. It's not that DLSS 3 is improving the temporal uh, upscaling that it's already been doing. The difference here is you're now going to see the introduction of DLSS frame generation as an on-off toggle switch that's now available in games that support DLSS 3. Now, in order to include this, the game also has to include NVIDIA's reflex low latency technology. Now, this is a separate toggle, so you can turn on or off DLSS frame generation, and you can turn on or off NVIDIA reflex low latency mostly independently. The difference is if you use DLSS frame generation, it will force you to turn on NVIDIA's reflex low latency, although I don't see that really being a downside. I have, maybe some of you guys know differently, but I've searched and I don't, I haven't seen any downside to using reflex when it's available. It seems to just increase your system uh, efficiency, right? The communication between the CPU and the GPU and decrease system latency, which just seems like a good thing when it's available. Now, some games benefit from it more than others, and we'll definitely talk about that. So basically, these three features are available independently, but only, at least for now, the RTX 4000 GPUs will have DLSS frame generation available. Um, but they can, again, choose to turn it on or off. Now, the issue with this that I've brought up in other videos that we're now seeing um, in, in this is that it it has to wait for two images to be ready, traditionally rendered, and then it inserts one in the middle. So you're not getting a new frame out, out of thin air. And let me pop out of the way here so you can fully see the comparison. So what we're, what we're seeing here is the AI generated frame happening in between the two traditionally rendered ones. Now you can see that it doesn't quite look as good as a traditionally rendered frame. But the fact that you're getting it there in between two frames that, that should look perfect means that it's actually very difficult in motion to spot these differences. So I do wanna be quite positive about that. Now I haven't seen this on my own screen, I've seen this video. So please, I'll link it in my description. Absolutely watch this video and you can see it in motion. And in motion, it looks very, very smooth. And I think this is a very positive feature that a lot of people should use in a lot of situations. But do notice that things aren't going to look perfect in every scenario. Uh, your game engine is not producing this frame. It's just a machine learning algorithm taking the frame in front of it and the frame behind it and inserting one. Uh, here's another scene where we see another uh, potential problem. In one scene that is traditionally rendered, right, the, the location of these bars blocking the building behind it was here, and then in our next traditionally rendered frame, they're here. So when the AI has to decide what's happening in between, it doesn't have any data to work with right here. So it just kind of gets a generally a uh, little blurred smudge that's kind of the same color as what's happening averaged out around it. So again, it's not perfect. But like I said, this frame will be on the screen for such a short amount of time in between two perfect looking ones that I, that I can't emphasize enough that this is really, really 
uh, it's really nitpicking to highlight this, but at the same time, I think we need to, because this is gonna make GPU reviews extremely complicated. Because when you just compare frame rates, if you, if you allow this technology, you're not comparing frames that are all created equally, as we can see here. So yes, there's a number of frames per second on the screen that does increase when you're using frame generation. And for the most part, they look really good, but they're not perfect. They're not of an equal quality to the frames that you're getting from the actual game engine rendering it traditionally. So that's a, a big downside. The other downside is to do this, it had to wait for a frame that came after it to be introduced and that affects the system latency. So normally when you enable DLSS, system latency actually decreases. Uh, you can even see this with reflex on or off. And again, this data is thanks to this Digital Foundry video. I'm giving my thoughts on it. They had exclusive access to this stuff to test. So I have to work with what's out there. Please watch their full video. There's a lot more comparisons on there. Um, I'm just giving my thoughts about them. But notice that, for example, when, you, when you're rendering it native and then you render it with DLSS, you are decreasing system latency. And I've seen a lot of misinformation on the internet about there where people thought that even DLSS2 uh, increased system latency. And in all of the thoroughly done tests I've ever seen, it seems to reduce system latency. And here's why. Now I'm gonna show a slide here that is actually created by Intel for to, to explain their XESS. Um, algorithm, but this works for, for the purpose I'm using it here. It's, it's going to emphasize the same thing. So pretend this XESS here says DLSS. Basically, DLSS 2, the old version, the kind that's still happening when you're doing DLSS 3, the upscaling, is separate from the frame generation, right? So DLSS super resolution, which is still part of what we're doing here, does decrease latency because it reduces the time to render the frame. So you just get it on screen sooner. By reducing the rendering time, by reducing the resolution that it's rendering at, this, this is a graph of the frame time, right? So this is the time to calculate a frame traditionally. You render it, apply TAA, and then some post effects. If you reduce the rendering time, and then use, in this case, it would be DLSS instead of the TAA. That takes a little bit longer to calculate than TAA, but it takes a lot less extra time than you reduced from getting the render resolution. So this reduces the time it takes to calculate a frame. This is why you get more frames per second. And if you're getting more frames on the this, on this, uh, screen and calculated for you to interact with sooner, this reduces the latency. So generally, when we see an increased frame rate, it's going to go hand in hand with decreased system latency. So the game will feel more responsive to your controls, and this can give you a competitive edge in competitive games where you, you, know, a, you can see an enemy pop onto screen sooner when they pop around a corner, that type of thing. And normal DLSS decreases latency as expected. Now, NVIDIA Reflex also decreases system latency, but in a different way. This is just increasing the efficiency somehow of how your CPU and GPU are talking to each other, I guess. I'm gonna be honest, I don't fully understand exactly what Reflex does, but it does seem to work. Uh, we can see here um, that in this Portal game, leaving it at native rendering resolution, but just kicking on Reflex, gives you actually a pretty massive reduction to overall system latency, right? So we're seeing consistently, that, and that even when you pair DLSS2 with Reflex, you get a reduction in system latency even further than what you just got from uh, enabling DLSS. So then we get these screens, and this is what I really wanted to see when this technology was announced, and huge thank you to Digital Foundry for getting us some of this available. Again, please watch their full video. But what we're seeing here is the native uh, performance. And, and we've got a few games here. We're gonna see Spider-Man, Cyberpunk, and the new Portal uh, with the ray tracing added in. So we're seeing the native performance here um, with a reflex off at a 39 milliseconds of latency. This is in Spider-Man. And then if they kick reflex on, they, they get a three millisecond reduction of latency, great. 
By going with DLSS 2 at the performance mode, they're able to go, you know, boost performance by 36% and um, boost the uh, system latency by reducing it, you know, reduce system latency by 15 milliseconds. And then kicking reflex on brings it down to 23 milliseconds. DLSS 3 frame generation cannot be tested re with reflex off. It's, it's auto turned on. But what we can compare here now is that DLSS 3 frame generation, while its overall performance is you know, more than double the native performance, and it's a big boost past DLSS 2 performance mode, uh, the system latency overall in this test is actually two milliseconds worse than uh, the native 4K with reflex on. And it's 15 milliseconds worse than DLSS 2 performance, so basically DLSS without the frame generation, um, and, and with reflex on. So I thought that was a very interesting comparison, but it seems to be very, very different depending on which game you're actually looking at. Because here in Portal, uh, with their test chamber, we're seeing significantly different results. Where we're seeing the native 4K performance here, um, with reflex off 129 milliseconds, reflex on 95 milliseconds, DLSS 2 performance, uh, triples, right, more than triples the, the frame rate in this situation, in this scene. And then with uh, reflex off, they're down to 59 millisecond response time, reflex on 53, and then DLSS 3 frame generation is 56 milliseconds. So here, comparing DLSS 3 frame generation to DLSS 2 performance without frame, frame generation, it's actually extremely close. Now, in a competitive esports title or something like that, you might still, you'd probably still want to save the three milliseconds and not um, use the frame generation technique. But in a single player game, I think three milliseconds of response time is fine. That, that's not that big of a deal. But notice the comparison to this Spider Man test where the uh, frame generation uh, latency was actually worse than the native. Uh, latency with reflex on, and here we're seeing the frame generation performance significantly better than the native performance with reflex on. So this is varying wildly between these. Now I believe Spider-Man was more CPU limited in this test, so I think that could be part of the issue. Um, notice they're not getting as big of a DLSS 2 performance jump either, because I think you hit a point where you're just CPU limited. And the interesting th th thing with the DLSS 3 frame generation is it can generate those no new frames even if the CPU is the limit and the overall uh, game engine can't keep up. You can't interact with those frames, so they don't help your latency. Uh, but they do smooth out the overall motion on the screen. So I think that could be one of the reasons why we're seeing a, a significantly different result there. Now, the other test they ran was Cyberpunk 2077 in the market scene with all of the um, ray tracing enabled. They didn't have access to the ray tracing overdrive mode that NVIDIA has been showing off, but with the normal game with all of the ray tracing turned up. We're seeing native 4K uh, reflex on actually gain quite a bit of uh, latency here. Uh, sorry, decreased latency quite a bit here, down to 62 milliseconds, DLSS 2 performance, uh, over doubling, right, the, the overall, um, you know, performance of the game in terms of frame rate. We can also see significant, uh, you know, uh, latency reduction, and then DLSS 3 frame generation with about four times the performance of native 4K in terms of the frames that you see on the screen. But then in terms of system latency, it is better than running the game at native 4K with reflex on, but it is worse than DLSS 2 performance, even without reflex on, and then significantly worse than with, with reflex on. Now, my final thoughts here about all this is that I'm not super negative about all this. I think that this is really, really cool technology. I think that in a lot of single player games, um, the latency issue is just going to be a non-factor. If the game feels responsive enough in a single player game, I think you should use it be, as long as the image quality is good enough. And again, like we saw with the, with, in these image quality tests, it's not perfect, but this is freezing the game to isolate that AI generated frame and look at it for deficiencies 
Whereas in motion, I think we're mostly not going to see that. Your eye is gonna kinda average out those in between. So I can't wait to get my hands on this to give you some actual like, okay, I've felt it in person uh, kind of feedback on what I think. But what I think is, is that in single player games, this is gonna be really useful as long as, again, when I'm actually seeing it in person, you don't really notice the, the deficiencies of those frames. And what you probably notice more is the increased smoothness. So eSports players, which is one of the places where, where people really do seek these crazy high frame rates though, I think you're definitely gonna wanna have this turned off because the frame that you're seeing in between won't be accurate. Um, right, if you saw an enemy's movement there and you fire at that frame, right, it's not accurate. But more importantly, you're gonna delay when you see the frame, so you're gonna lose that tiny bit of a competitive edge. So overall, I'm thinking eSports off, single player, probably turn it on, but we really need um, to, to see how it actually feels on screen. Because as excellent as this Digital Foundry video is at showing it to us, there's only so much you can see in a YouTube video compared to experiencing something on your own screen. So there's a lot more we really do need to know about this, but man, GPU reviews are gonna be so complicated <laughs> when it's not just the hardware and not all frames are now created equal because in the past, higher frame rate gave you two benefits decreased latency and increased visual smoothness. Now we're seeing the weird case. Increased latency, increased smoothness with a few motion artifacts because not all frames are created equal. Anyway, hope this was interesting. Please watch the full Digital Foundry video for more context and uh, demonstrations of this in motion. And I hope all of you have an excellent day.